Hello scientists, this is the walkthrough video for lab four from Take Home Physics. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new Google Sheet. This will be our data collection system. I'll call it Physics Lab 004 Data Collection. It's always good to create your data collection system before you start the lab. Let's put a few columns here. First column will be our distance in meters. I'm going to be dropping a marble from three different heights, one meter, 1.5 meters, and two meters. But I don't have a way to measure out meters. I have a ruler that measures out in centimeters. So I'm going to convert all of those distances into centimeters. There are 100 centimeters in a meter. So I'll multiply all of my meters by 100. And that will convert my meters to centimeters. I'll copy that formula and paste it in the cells below. And there we go. I'm also going to be measuring how much time it takes for the marble to fall that distance. And I'll be taking my measurements in seconds. And I'll be taking three measurements, three trials from each height. I will also be averaging the times from those three trials to get my average time in seconds. And I'll also be calculating the average speed of that marble on the way down. And that will be in centimeters per second. And lastly, I wanna calculate the final speed of the marble right before it hit the ground, also in centimeters per second. Let's put some formulas into this spreadsheet. For average time, it'll be equals the average parentheses and then the three time cells. Close the parentheses and press enter. There's an error right now, but that's because there's no data yet. Copy that formula and paste it into the two cells below. Next, I want to calculate my average speed, which will be equals, and that's the distance in centimeters divided by the average time. Speed is the change in distance over the change in time. And I will copy that formula and paste it into the cells below. And then the last formula is for final speed. If we start at zero and accelerate constantly, then the final speed is twice the average speed. So multiply that average speed by two. Copy the formula and paste it into the cells below. And we're almost ready. Now I'm just going to center everything to make it look nice and neat, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Okay, let's get our materials. You need a ruler, standard ruler. We'll be using the centimeter side. You also need a roll of clear plastic tape and you need some glass marbles, one of them, two of them, three glass marbles. And I like to put those in the center of the clear plastic tape roll just so that they stay put. You also need a pair of scissors to cut the tape. You need a pen or a marker, either one. You also need uh, something to catch the marble as it falls that can make a sound. It's an old pie pan that I'll be using. And then something soft to go underneath the pie pan. That's an old towel. You might need a stool too. And you might need a chair too. And that's just to reach the two meters. So go ahead and grab your tape, grab your scissors. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some distance markers to put on the wall. And I'm gonna cut a strip of tape about one, one and a half inches, one and a half inches long, just like that. And I'm gonna cut three of them because I'll be dropping the marble from three different heights, three different distances. So one more after this, and then I'll have my three distance markers. Okay, perfect. I wanna keep that roll of tape around so I can put my marbles in there, but I can put the scissors away. Okay, go ahead and grab that ruler. Now remember there are 30 centimeters 30 centimeters in one ruler. One 12 inch ruler has 30 centimeters. And so I'm a teacher, so I have a meter stick 
and in one meter stick there are one, two, three, and a third rulers. So that's 10 centimeters right there. So I'm going to measure from the ground one meter or three and a third rulers, 100 centimeters. So there's one ruler, two rulers, three rulers, that's 90 centimeters, and then a third of a ruler or 10 more centimeters, and that's 100. And I'm going to put a piece of tape right there on the wall. Okay. Now for 1.5 meters or 150 centimeters, I'm going to measure 50 more centimeters up from that first piece of tape. So that's one ruler plus 20 more centimeters and put a piece of tape. Okay, and now for 200 centimeters or two meters, I'm going to measure one ruler, which is 30 centimeters, and then 20 more centimeters for a total of 50 more, 150 plus 50, 200 centimeters all the way there at the top. Put a piece of tape you might need a stool to reach that or maybe even a chair and that's okay okay now get that pen or get that marker and go ahead and label your distance markers label the tape not the wall that's why we're using the tape so that's two meters 1.5 meters or 150 centimeters one meter or 100 centimeters okay get your pie pan something that's going to make a noise when the marble hits it and then get your old towel or t-shirt or something and that's just going to soften the blow so the marble doesn't bounce out. Go ahead and put the towel on the ground, put the pie pan on the ground and then go ahead and grab your three glass marbles. And we're going to be dropping these marbles from a height of one meter to start right into that pie pan. It should uh, make a nice sound just like this. Perfect. There we go. So go ahead and grab your timing device and let's drop the marble from one meter and time how long it takes to hit the ground. There we go. I started the time when I let go of the marble and stopped it once I heard it hit the pie pan. And I'm entering my data in my data sheet. Three trials. You can keep your marbles in that roll of tape just so that they don't roll away. And remember, you're going to do three trials for each height. So now from 1.5 meters or 150 centimeters, let's time how long that takes. And we'll do three trials. If you have a notebook or a piece of paper that you're taking your data on, that's, uh, that's fine too. Now you might need a stool or a chair to reach two meters. Let's go ahead and get our timing device and do three trials from a height of two meters. Okay, once you're done, take all that tape off the walls so that your family doesn't get mad at you for leaving tape on the walls. And go ahead and throw that away and then put all your materials back in your physics kit. So your roll of tape, your ruler, those three marbles, a pair of scissors, pack that up. And then return the pie pan, take that towel, maybe wipe off some of the glue uh, residue or tape residue. Put the stool away, put that chair back in the kitchen and then uh, put away your timing device. All right, let's analyze our data. We got a lot of decimal points here, so let's go ahead and round to the nearest hundredths place. That's two places past the decimal. We'll do that for the average time, the average speed, and then also the final speed as well. And I wanna know the relationship between the distance that the marble fell and its final speed right before it hit the ground. So I'm gonna make a chart and I'm gonna graph distance versus final speed. So I'm gonna make a line graph. And the series, or my Y values, that's gonna be my distances in centimeters. So I'll highlight those cells. And the X axis, the horizontal axis, will be my final speeds in centimeters per second. And there we go, we have a nice line graph with a pretty constant slope. I need to label those axes though, and I need to label the chart. We don't want an unlabeled chart. That's no good. I'll call this distance versus final speed. And you can change the font size of the title if you want. I'm gonna change it to a 12 point font. And let's label our axes now. I'll start with the horizontal axis. 
and I'll label that final speed. Make sure that you put your units in parentheses at centimeters per second for the final speed. And for the vertical axis, that will be our distances in centimeters. And there we go, we made a distance versus final speed graph. As you can see, as distance increases, the final speed right before the marble hit the ground also increases. But what if we wanted to make a prediction? Like if we dropped a marble from three meters or 300 centimeters, what would that final speed be? Now the cool thing about graphs is you can actually extrapolate and you can make predictions. So what I wanna do is I wanna change the horizontal axis and I want to max it out at, we'll say, 1,000 centimeters per second. And you can see that if that line continues along in the same trend at 300 centimeters at that distance, we'll have a final speed of about 700 centimeters per second. So that's one way to do it, just extend the line. Here's another way. We can change that line chart to a scatter plot, and then we can graph what's called a trend line. You can find that in series and go to trend line. And if this was a linear relationship, then at 300 centimeters, that final speed would be 800 centimeters per second. Now there's something called an R squared value in statistics that tells you how accurate your prediction is. And the closer that number is to one, the better the predictive accuracy of that model. There's different types of trend lines another type is an exponential one and look at the r squared value now even closer to one so that's an even better prediction uh, let's try one more we'll do a polynomial trend line and check that out that is uh, almost a perfect prediction right there if not a perfect prediction and as you can see at 300 centimeters we can expect a final speed between uh, 600 and 800 centimeters per second but i'm going to change the scale of the graph and now we can see a little bit more clearly that that final speed at 300 centimeters, pr the predicted value is about 720 centimeters per second. And uh, that makes sense because uh, the final speeds are increasing. All right, good work. See you, scientists.